Hey guys, I'm Miss Panabaker. Welcome back to English. So this week, you guys should have looked at a list of things that create a scary or spooky atmosphere. And I didn't mean create a list of things like Danny DeVito, dolls, Barbie, clowns, shadow, things that are scary to you. I didn't mean that. I meant create a list of things that contribute to a general overall atmosphere of scariness or spookiness or fear. And you guys came up with some really cool responses. You wrote down things like blood or farmhouses, darkness, rain. Some of you noted things like the volume or the sound effects. Some of you noted that things like scary music can contribute to an environment or an atmosphere of fear. Good job. You guys noticed that either extreme silence or a particular type of music contributes to scariness. If you're watching a scary movie, the music really goes a long way in creating that jump scare effect, right? Some of you also noticed obvious things like um, if something is disfigured, right? If you have a doll, like a basic standard doll, a doll itself is not scary, but a doll with an eyeball popped out or with broken, jagged fractures down its face, that thing is gonna be a little bit scarier. I'm really, really proud of you guys. You noticed a lot of things that create an element of fear. That is awesome. What we're going to do today is identify what those things have in common. And it's because what you'll notice as we jump into our unit on horror and nightmares is that there are certain common features that every scary uh, experience has in common. They all create fear by drawing on certain common things. I'm gonna say that again so that I know you really get it. Everything that produces fear creates fear by drawing on certain common things. Horses are not scary in and of themselves. Dolls are not scary in and of themselves. Farmhouses or attics or English teachers are not scary in and of themselves, but they are made scary because of certain universal common fear creating techniques. So that's what you guys started to notice. You noticed that there were certain techniques that authors or videographers, film creators, musicians, um, visual artists, certain common techniques that they all draw from in order to create an atmosphere of fear. So uh, you should have created a post on Schoology in your discussion question that identified some of those things. What you're going to do right now is actually create physical notes. You can do this by typing them. You can also do this by actually handwriting notes in your notebook. It is totally up to you as long as you have these things written down. But what we're going to go through right now is taking all of those individual elements and recognizing and creating a particular list of common universal features that these artists use to create fear. That's what we're gonna do at the moment. So I'm gonna set up my computer over here. You are going to either pause this video or keep it running and go create a section of notes where you are going to write down what I write down on the board. Go. Welcome to my whiteboard. That did not take very long, did it? Okay, so what you guys should have noticed is that there are certain things that each artist draws on. Now, some of you guys noticed things like a scary farmhouse. You noticed um, an abandoned hospital, an abandoned school. You noticed a particular attic, old, creaky, covered in dust. You noticed the time of day. Normally scary stories don't take place in the middle of the bright sunny afternoon. You notice that they take place in darkness at night in the middle of a storm. So what you all noticed was that there are certain features of a setting that every artist draws on to create fear. So at the top of your notes, you are going to call this elements of horror. If you want, you can call it fear instead. 
these are things that create fear across the board. I don't know if you can see that. Let's find out. That'll work. I'm just gonna like pop up this computer screen. Hey guys, thanks. Okay, cool. What you all noticed in the setting is that it is a setting of isolation. That means that you're separate and distinct from other people. It's really important. You can't be afraid if you are surrounded by a group of other healthy, reasonable, skilled, healthy, equipped people, unless they're zombies, in which case you're alone because you're surrounded by zombies. So the first thing that we see are elements of isolation. If you want next to isolation, you can call that being alone. An abandoned farmhouse is scary because you don't have anybody around you. Walking through a scary cornfield is frightening because you don't have anybody around you. So it's important to note those things. That type of abandoned or isolated setting is part of what creates fear. Now, the other thing that you guys noticed was the way things appear. You noticed that things are either very, very dark or very, very bright. You notice that there's a sort of black and whiteness about them. Some of you noticed that there are certain colors that are usually used. You noticed black, you noticed gray, you noticed shadows, you noticed um, bright red, probably because it's the color of blood. All of these things create visual sensory imagery. Some of you also notice the way that things sound, scary music, scary sound effects, things that sound out of place. And some of you noticed that a very few movies are able to make you physically feel something. People being dunked in ice cold water, people being burned alive or scalded, um, the fear of a sharp or blunt object slicing through your body. And oh, that's disgusting. I don't, I don't want to think about that. What you noticed were sensory details. You'll notice the root word in sensory is sense because it appeals to your five senses. So sensory details. Every good scary artist can appeal to your senses, the way that you see things, the way you hear things, the way you smell things, the way things taste, the way things feel. Now, we don't really have a lot of ability in movies to appeal to your sense of smell, which is why you don't see that one very much. But visually, auditorily, we have tons of stuff like that. So sensory details are a universal appeal. You draw on an audience, you make them afraid by putting those things in there. Okay. Um, the other thing that we have is, how do I phrase this one? I think I have it written down somewhere. Pause right there, guys. So the other thing that we have is something that some of you noticed, some of you, but I don't think you noticed it to this full extent. So what you noticed was that some dolls and some people, some characters are scary. Now, the interesting thing is, like we said, a farmhouse itself isn't scary. A doll itself isn't scary. An English teacher herself, beautiful she is, is not necessarily scary. What makes them scary is when they look normal and then they no longer look normal. That's called disfiguration. I'm going to write it down up there so that way you know. That disfiguration creates an altered sense of reality. This is starting to sound really sci-fi, isn't it? Yeah, because we're in a bit of sci-fi here. We have a bit of an altered, alter, by the way, means changed. How's that for your vocab word? An altered sense of reality. And underneath that, with another arrow, I want you to put dis Disfiguration, D-I-S-F-U-G. Nope, take that back. F-I-G, I'm an English teacher, I can spell. Do, 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 do. F-I-G-U-R-A-T-I-O-N. Disfiguration. This means 
that you take something that you are already familiar with and it changes into something you don't recognize. It should be normal. It should be obvious. It should be trustworthy. It should be that neighbor that you grew up with, that doll that you played with, the attic that you spent all of that time in in your childhood. It should look normal, but then it doesn't. Something ever so slight changes and then something else ever so slightly changes. Something you already know becomes something unpredictable, unknowable. And that creates unpredictability. Okay, the last thing that we see related to an altered sense of reality is a common theme. In every scary story, in every scary movie, we see something called transformation. You guys already know what transformation means. When something transforms, it changes from one thing into another. And in this sense, transformation occurs when we see a person, a setting, a, a desire, an idea change from, I'm gonna put an arrow underneath this that says, from the familiar slash safe to the unfamiliar or foreign slash unsafe. So I'm going to write that or read that one more time so you know what to write. What you see in scary stories and in horror movies is transformation. From the beginning to the end, you see something, a person, a setting, an idea, a thing, a character, or whatever. It changes from familiar and or safe into something unfamiliar or unsafe. That's what all of this comes back to. This idea. Fear can only start when we take something known and it transforms into the unknown. And it's because when you are in isolation, when you are alone, that is unpredictable. When you have sensory details like stark bright colors or bleak um, extreme color ranges, when you have things like extremes, and I'm gonna write extremes here so that way you know. When you have things like extreme noises, extreme screens, extreme bright visuals, it's not familiar, it's not calm, it's not safe, it's unfamiliar, unpredictable, uncontrollable, it's chaotic. When you have an altered sense of reality or disfiguration, it takes something familiar and makes it unfamiliar. When we see things transform from the beginning to the end, but we start to get a sense in all of this is a loss of control. Make sure that you can see that. All of these things give us a loss of control. You don't feel safe. You are sitting on your own couch. You are in a classroom, in a brightly lit room, in a chair made of cold, hard, plastic and metal. You have people around you who are flesh and blood, but for some reason, you start to recognize little by little a loss of control. Things are no longer familiar. They are no longer safe. They are no longer predictable. Instead, you are extremely isolated. You are in extreme noises, extreme visuals, extreme colors. You have extreme disfiguration. You have extreme transformations. It makes you feel little by little like everything you know dissolves. Now, the interesting thing about horror stories is not the fact that they happen in a book or they happen on the screen. I said that wrong. The interesting thing about these stories is that they happen in a book or they happen in a screen. You are sitting on your couch, safe and sound. You are sitting in a classroom, safe and sound, and probably a little bored, but safe and sound. But for some reason, that fear, that loss of control 
from all of these things starts to seep in. Why? Why does it affect you so much? The question is, how does fear work? Every artist to create fear or horror, all of them come back to one common trait. They use elements of isolation. They use sensory details. They use an altered sense of reality. They use transformation. They use a loss of control. All of these things, they use all of them in order to get you a certain way. All of these things are founded upon something called an appeal to the imagination. Imagination. I know I can never say that word properly without thinking of SpongeBob. An appeal to the imagination. Where does a nightmare occur? It's in your imagination. Why are you afraid of spiders? Because of what you think is going to happen. Why are you afraid of drowning? Why am I afraid of losing control of my car and crashing it off of a thing into like freezing, cold, swirly, wintry water and then drowning to death? It occurs in our imagination. All of these things occur right here in our heads. It's not actually in real life. That doesn't mean it's not influenced by things in real life, but it occurs right here in my head. And then my imagination sees being alone and exaggerates it. It sees these sensory details, these extremes, and exaggerates them. It sees the sense of reality, this disfiguration, and it exaggerates it. Everything happens tenfold, fifteenfold. My imagination betrays me. That is how artists get you. All of this comes down to an appeal to the imagination, which I'm currently blocking with my giant head. An appeal to the imagination. Without this, without your imagination, you can't be scared. And that is why some of you are sitting here like, Panna Baker, I'm not afraid of anything. I believe it. You might legitimately not be afraid of anything. Good for you. You know what else that tells me? You don't have an active imagination. Suckers, your life is probably really boring because you don't have a good imagination. I have a great imagination, which is also why I am terrified of everything. Literally everything. Like if it's a thing, I am afraid of it. If it's a floor mat, I'm afraid of it. My own shoes, afraid of it. My own hair sometimes, my glasses are off and I can't see how much hair has gotten to the shower drain. I'm afraid of it, guys. I'm terrified of everything. But that also means that I have a pretty strong imagination. Some of you do not. And so you are not as susceptible to fear, but some of you do. What you are going to be looking for in our readings this week, next week, and the future weeks is all of these elements of horror and fear behind us. So as you read The Fall of the House of Usher tomorrow, I would like you to annotate. You are going to mark any time you see one of these things. Now you might see them through shadows, scary music, um, isolation, an altered sense of reality, the unfamiliar, the unsafe, a loss of control, you might see those things. But I want you to, in the margins, literally mark elements of isolation, sensory details, especially if they are extreme, um, an altered sense of reality, disfiguration, transformation, loss of control, appeal to the imagination. Those are the things that you are going to be marking in our reading as we proceed. If you have any questions about this stuff, send me an email, send me a video message, give me a phone call. I'm here to help. I hope this made sense. We're going to be coming back to these elements a ton over the course of this, of this unit. So make sure that you are familiar with them. If you have any questions on them, hit me up. Have a great day, guys. See you later.